Trick or treat. What are we going to do about all this damn candy? Help me. Ah, don't worry. I got you covered, guys. Take a listen. Welcome back to Motherhood Interrupted. I am your host, Kimberly Lovey. Okay, guys, the struggle is real. What are we going to do with all of this candy that our kids are going to get for Halloween? I have you covered. I'm actually going to play back an episode that I had recorded. I think it was episode 17. And basically, it is going to share how to swap out candy for something else and the Halloween ghost is coming to your house didn't you know so take a listen so you have a game plan for tonight and get ready to write a cute little note and maybe trade a toy for candy and take a listen and I kind of walk you through exactly how to do it so you're welcome have a wonderful and safe Halloween and I'm so excited again to be a part of this journey with you guys on motherhood interrupted honey honey here are your Halloween hacks and it works beautifully it's worked every year for my kids so I know it'll work wonderful for your family as well hi guys I wanted to talk to you about Halloween and specifically what your game plan should be when we approach Halloween and we don't want to have fights over candy. We don't want sugar overload. We just want a really fun evening. And so I have blogged about this, but I also wanted to just run through it with you guys because I have some really handy tips and um, just some helpful hints of things of how to make sure that your Halloween goes more smoothly. So here we go. The first step is as you approach Halloween, you should establish the rules with your kids so that they know exactly what to expect. So this is going to help you to avoid any of the meltdowns. So before going out trick-or-treating you should basically have the conversation with the kids that you guys are going to receive a ton of candy tonight and you should definitely come up with the amount of candy you want them to have that night so for example you can say tonight you guys get to have two pieces of candy um, and then afterwards you're going to get to save three pieces and so Make sure that when you establish these rules, there are rules that you know you can follow and that you can really stick with so that you're not going against the rules that you had set out. So really brainstorm with your spouse and think about what the amount is that feels right for your family. I think for our kids, you know, being so young, it makes sense to keep the number of pieces of candy pretty low. Um, And they're really kind of amenable to that as long as they know what to expect and you really just hold to that and keep reminding them about what the rules are as you go. Um, So once you've come home and they've had, let's say they're two pieces of candy for the evening, like you talked about, you should come up with how many you're going to save. And so for us, we're going to save three pieces of candy. And so what you'll do is you'll take out a mini Ziploc bag and you will hand it to your kids and say, pick out your top three, or maybe it's five pieces, whatever of candy. And so let them own the process. So they can pick out their top three to five pieces of candy they want to save for the coming days and put it in the Ziploc bag and then you let them know this is exactly where we're going to keep it. For us, we like to keep ours in the refrigerator and say um, over the next week, provided you guys behave, you can have your one piece of candy of your choice from your Halloween um, trick-or-treating. Now, this leaves the big question of what do we do with the giant bag of candy? And obviously, this is this the trickiest part so insert the halloween ghost so what you do is you explain to them that the giant buckets of candy are going to be traded by between the kids and the halloween ghost so what they do is they leave their buckets out on your front porch or if you have another place that's fine we select our front porch and we have the kids leave their buckets of candy outside and we let them know that the halloween ghost is going to fly around to all of the houses and swap out the candy for a toy or something else that you feel comfortable giving your kids 
And so this does require a little bit of planning. So that's why it's important that I um, provide this information to you this week and right away so that you have time to plan. But basically what we do is have the kids set out the candy at night, say good night to their candy, and then once they go to sleep, you need to do the transfer. So the next step is the transfer. So once the kids are sleeping, you take the candy, you transfer it to a gallon Ziploc bag so that they don't see the bucket in like the freezer. So I know this is important, this step, because my husband did this and wasn't really thinking of this, but if you just stick the bucket in the freezer, then you're busted the next day. My kids are pretty smart, so, and I'm sure your kids are too, like they're very astute. So make sure you take in the bucket and transfer it to a gallon size bag and then put it in your freezer in your garage or hide it somewhere uh, where the kids will not quickly recognize it or else you're going to get nailed. So um, you can take the bucket, leave it out front, like leave it back on the front porch where you started um, so that they can keep the bucket for the next year. That's fine. Or you can just take the bucket away and put it away with your Halloween stuff if you're like really on top of it. Okay, so then now that you've done that, this is the next step, the exchange and the note. So make sure you have a toy for each child. Um, it doesn't need to be extravagant. It could be, you know, a coloring book or something you already have something from the dollar store. It does not need to be extravagant. Kids just love this idea that they get a gift from the Halloween ghost. They're very relaxed about it. So um, definitely don't feel like you need to break the bank. Um, and then what you do is you take that toy and place it outside of their room, or you can put it back on the front porch. We've done it both ways and either way works perfectly fine. Uh, I think I kind of prefer, prefer leaving it on the front porch, but maybe if it's windy or rainy or whatever, and that doesn't make sense, then maybe just leave it outside their room. Um, and then you leave a cute little note addressed to the kids from the Halloween ghost and they love it. Now our kids can't read. So you leave the note for each child with the toy outside of their room and then you can read it to them and say, Oh boy, Carter, look, look at what they, the Halloween ghost left for you and look what he read. And they get so excited. They love it. And they completely forget about the candy. Again, they still have their few pieces that you've retained and that they've put aside. Um, and so what I've done is I actually went and created a template for you guys to just go on my website under tools for you. And it is sitting there waiting for you. You just put in your email and then I will send you an email and in your inbox, you'll click and you'll get the printable PDF where it's this really cute note from the Halloween ghost to your child. It doesn't matter if you have a boy or a girl or more than one child. I the way I wrote it is so that it could really work for any family. So make sure you go to KimberlyLevy.com tools for you and download that um, as soon as you can and just print it. And then there you go. You don't have to think or do anything. And the kids just love it. So those are my tips for avoiding the sugar meltdowns and getting a smooth transition to avoid those crazy, crazy fights and um, meltdowns with your child. So I hope that's helpful. It's definitely worked for us the last, the last few years. So I'm super excited to share it with you guys. It's really easy and it is a tip you definitely need to know about if you're a parent. So I hope you guys have a very safe Halloween and, um, we will be trick or treating with our little pod. So we're keeping it very small and safe. So please be safe. Please be happy and let me know how it goes. Take care. All right, that is it for today. Now, as you know, some of our best conversations actually happen after the show. So I want you to find me on Instagram at Kimberly Lovey and let me know your thoughts about today's show. You can screenshot this episode and let us know what your biggest takeaway was and tag me at Kimberly Lovey and we can share it on our stories. I will see you again, same time, same place next week. All right, that is it for today. Now, as you know, some of our best conversations actually happen after the show. So I want you to find me on Instagram at Kimberly Lovey and let me know your thoughts about today's show. You can screenshot this episode and let us know what your biggest takeaway was and tag me at Kimberly Lovey and we can share it on our stories. I will see you again, same time, same place next week. <laughs>